Yes. I hope so, too. Thank you, former Defense Secretary William Cohen. We appreciate it. Good. All right, now to Afghanistan and the 2014 exit date. That war is now in its 10th year with the human and physical costs mounting every single day. Republican Congressman Mike Kaufman is from Colorado. He serves on the House Armed Services Committee and is a former Marine. And yesterday he returned from a trip to Afghanistan. Congressman, uh, great to have you here. I know you were in Afghanistan a year ago as well. Uh, did you see a difference? You know, well, I saw a difference, I think, on the ground. I think we're making some progress militarily. But unfortunately, I think that the, the Afghan governance piece that, that has to follow on once we've secured an area, it, it just ain't in there yet. And I, and I think that part is, is problematic. And uh, we probably need to look at some kind of course correction, I think, in terms of the policy. Now, I, I know you, uh, you're against nation building. Are we doing nation building in Afghanistan? We are absolutely doing nation building. Uh, it's a, a robust uh, counterinsurgency uh, whose cornerstone is really nation building. And I, and I think that, that uh, I think that's a bridge too far. I think it's unsustainable uh, for our military and for the taxpayers of this country. So that's interesting. Uh, then do you want to leave before the 2014 exit date? No, uh, first of all, I don't see. I think the president is right about the 2014 uh, date. I don't see that as an exit strategy at all. Uh, that is a, a date merely by which uh, there's a benchmark where Afghan security forces are, are to take the lead in, in uh, military operations. Uh, what I think is, I, I do think we need a, a presence in Afghanistan uh, that fit, meets our security interest. I don't think that uh, reshaping Afghan society, uh, developing their economy, uh, and giving them uh, um, a Western-style form of government that doesn't fit their political culture uh, is in our best interest. And quite frankly, uh, I don't think that it's achievable uh, and necessarily in their interest. So, Congressman Coleman, I'm trying to understand what you what you think the proper aim should should be because that's an interesting question so if, if you were in charge what would you want to do in the next four years and, and would that be worth it for four years to do what I, I'm, I'm trying to get that well, I think we have uh, an interest, a uh, security interest in Afghanistan to stand that it, it not fall to Taliban control. Uh, I think we have great interest in Pakistan right now, uh, particularly in the ungovernable areas. And our presence in Afghanistan gives us a platform where we can certainly uh, strike at those uh, terrorist threats, those al-Qaeda threats in Pakistan as they coalesce. Uh, so I think we, need, we certainly have a role to play in Afghanistan. I think the problem with the, this administration administration is they have adopted uh, the plan from the last administration uh, that is basically a nation building plan uh, that requires us again to uh, create a Western style form of government in Afghanistan, uh, reshape uh, their society and, uh, and develop their economy. And I don't think that I think we can achieve our security objectives in Afghanistan without doing all those things. And, and I think so, and I think it's unrealistic, uh, the current right. plan. So I think there's a there's a path in the middle. We can do counterinsurgency where there's relative security and counterterrorism uh, where there's not. Yeah, you know, we're in half agreement there. Uh, I don't think we can build up the nation of <laughs> Afghanistan. I agree with you there. On the other hand, I think, you know, that we're fighting the Taliban and the Taliban's fighting us because we're there. You know, they, they've 92% in Kandahar and Helmand when in a poll when asked why are the Americans here had no idea. They, they hadn't even heard of 9-11. So it, it seems to me that we should get out uh, earlier. But I want to go to another topic. Uh, you know, you had sure. written a letter to Defense Secretary Robert Gates about the Fort Hood shooting, and you said that mm -hmm. one of the problems is the ideology of radical Islam. Tell us real quick about that, what your thoughts on that were. Well, I, I think during the, the Cold War, we, we recognized an ideological threat of Marxist communism. Uh, and we, in fact, vetted uh, those serving in the military to make sure they didn't have sympathies to that ideology. We, I believe, are facing today uh, the threat of radical Islam, and it's, it's an ideology, I think, fraudulently camouflaged in a religion. Uh, I served in Iraq with the United States Marine Corps, and I served with Muslim Americans that distinguished themselves uh, really as, as, as patriotic Americans in, in their service uh, to our country. And, and I would think that, that they would want to make sure that they were vetted as well uh, to where the soldiers around them had confidence uh, uh, in them uh, that they were not sympathetic uh, to the tenets of, of radical Islam. But Congressman, I mean, when you say to somebody, hey, I want to vet you because of your religion, 
Can you see how that might cause problems? For example, Scott Roeder uh, killed Dr. George Tiller. He was an extremist, radical Christian. Eric Rudolph did the Olympic bombing and a series of other uh, bombings. He was a radical Christian. If somebody came to you and said, Congressman Kaufman, I got to bet you because you're a Christian, I want to make sure you're not radical, wouldn't you be bothered by that? Well, I think everybody going into the military is, is vetted. Uh, to make sure they're, they're not a threat to their fellow soldiers. And, and I think is it a form of profiling uh, to, to say that, that uh, American Muslims uh, uh, that, that might uh, be in fact uh, uh, eventually um, encouraged into a radical Islam? Let me tell you what the danger is. What I worry about for, for the Muslim Americans serving in the military, that by trying to be so politically correct where they are not vetted, uh, I, th I think that the fact that there are suspicions on them uh, by their fellow soldiers, airmen, uh, s and sailors, and Marines, and, and I think that that's, those suspicions further alienate them uh, and make them more susceptible to, to so some of the tenets of, of radical Islam. So well, I, think, I, I, I think it's a, better and healthier for our military altogether. Congressman to, to, Coffin, to i got to press you on this just a little yeah. bit here. Because then you're singling sure. out the Muslims, though. Isn't, doesn't that create a problem? So you say, hey, look, everyone's vetted, but I want to vet the Muslims that are going into the uh, military more. I mean, if somebody came to you and said, look, I'm not going to vet the Muslims, I'm not going to vet the Jews or Buddhists, whoever, but since you're a Christian, I'm going to vet you more because of Tiller, because of Rudolph, because of all the other people who've done terrorist acts. Again, wouldn't that be problematic and, and possibly a constitutional problem? I think we have to, well, the, the mission of the military is defend democracy. I don't know if it's to practice it. But I, I do think that we have a responsibility to at least recognize, this administration has to recognize that we are at war with an ideology, and that is radical Islam. And I think that this administration refuses to recognize that threat. And I think that that is, is uh, part of the political correctness uh, of the, uh, the, the Fort Hood report. And I think the question is that the military needs to be asking itself, is how many more soldiers are going to be uh, lives are going to be sacrificed at the, at the altar of political correctness before we come to the grips of, with the fact that we are at war with radical Islam and just as during the Cold War we had to vet people to make sure that they didn't have sympathies uh, with Marxist uh, communists we, we have to vet people today uh, to make sure that they don't have sympathies uh, with the tenets of yeah. radical Islam Congress, uh, where they're a threat to their fellow soldiers. Uh, unfortunately, we've got to leave on a note of disagreement again. <laughs> because <laughs> okay. I'm afraid that you go to Muslims and you say, I'm going to vet all of you, then you conflate sure. Muslims with radical Islam. And that's that, I think, is the problem. But I, but I understand what you're saying. And we want to thank you sure. for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks right. for having me. We'll be right back. This is MSNBC.